we want to welcome you to All Things Real Estate, brought to you by the GK Group. Now, here are your hosts, Brad Avergon and Gary Kelly. Hey, Brad, has it been a good summer for you? It's been a great summer for me, Gary. How about you? It's been wonderful. I'll tell you, it's been kind of an odd summer. You know, I remember summers when I was a kid sitting underneath the tree, gentle breeze going by, looking at the clouds. You know, it was really kind of fun. Now, it's so freaking hot outside, you can't sit outside. <laughs> it was a warm one, that is for sure. But I'll beat it. It beat last summer, which was a real wet one, so I'll take it. Right. So, yeah, I was sitting there thinking as it was time to start to write this, which I was writing just Labor Day. So, what is that? September 2nd. Okay. And it was the the whole the old song. Now, what does that have to do with real estate? Probably very little. But the point is that there are people that wait until Labor Day to start to kick into gear on selling their house. They will, you know. All of a sudden, we'll get a call saying, we need to list this. We need to list it now. We've waited too long. There's one listing that Sue and I did not get. We had we had talked to the owners for kind of ad nauseum, and we gave them specific recommendations on what to do. They have not sold the house yet, and, you know, they're coming up on 70 days. So, you know, I have some ideas on what they can do, but I... I they're under contract. I can't reach out and say, this is what you should do. But people like that will start to come out of the woodwork and and say that they want to, to do things. The other thing is, because of that, inventory will start to creep up. And Brad, in the financing world, rates are creeping down. Right, right, right. We expect the Fed is meeting on September 18th. We do expect a, a little bit of a Fed you know, rate reduction there. And we think rates will slide down a little bit. Nothing nothing drastic, nothing to get excited, certainly nothing to hold off making any decision-making on, but we might see a little bit of an improvement. Well, I, I like to say to people, and it's actually words that I picked up from you years ago, uh, we will never see the rates that we saw during the pandemic because those were artificially maintained by stimulus and the banks couldn't make money at that point. Yeah, you, you, you can't you can't expect banks to put mortgages out there if they're not going to make money on them. Just not going to happen. Right. Right. No, you're absolutely right. That was uh, those were crazy times and crazy interest rates that were reflective of those crazy times. But they certainly were not the norm, nor were they uh, where they should be. So if you've got a case of intra, uh, interest inventory starting to creep up. Rates starting to creep down. Do you think it's a great time to buy? I do. I do think it's a great time to buy. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, I'm going to hold off to the spring market. That's when everybody comes on the market. I think the fall market's a great time to buy because you get a little bit more inventory out there. Hopefully there are not quite as many buyers out there. But I'll, although, I, as I say that, with rates you know, dropping, there may be an influx of of more buyers jumping back into the market. Um, certainly affordability gets a little bit better, but I think it's a great time to buy. Yeah, so do I. Uh, people that, again, people that sat in the springtime and said, yeah, I'm gonna get the house ready, and then they didn't. And then um, they finally do, or they call us and say, you know, we, a lot of times they'll call and say, yeah, we're we're in trouble here. We want the house on the market, and it's just we're overwhelmed. Well, you know, not to boast, but we've kind of seen that many times, so we kind of know what to do, um, provided that the seller is willing to work with us. And what do I mean by that? Yeah, you know, one thing that a seller can do is take everything that they've got in the house, literally everything, go through it, and um, you know, you you, you donate it. Yeah. Or you, you put it in a trailer, you know, a storage container to move to your next house. If you don't know where that is, 
The problem that happens inevitably is we'll walk into a house, there will be someone sitting there saying, this stapler, this was Sally's stapler. She stapled all of her papers with it. It's a wonderful stapler. This one's almost out of staples. Brad, do you have staples for Sally's stapler? And it just, you, at that point, you kind of lost it. Yeah. And and that's what happens. Have you seen that? I have. I have. I, I, I There's a uh, <clears throat> term, I call it analysis paralysis. And that's when people are just thinking about this and they're thinking about that and they're thinking. Of, and in the end, they, they take no steps. They take no action because... Quite frankly, the easiest thing to do is to take no action. To take action requires work. It requires decision making. It requires commitment. And so by doing so, they think they're helping themselves when, in fact, oftentimes they're hurting themselves. You know, in the case of a property, the property continues to deteriorate if it's not being well maintained or if it is being well maintained, it continues to cost them money um, when, in fact, they, they really desire to be moving on, you know, on to some other living situation. I hate to say this, and I'm not trying to be crass, but as I was writing it, and I did not put this in the in the article, um, we've seen where the people have died. We've seen where the carpet was removed because they came in and took it out because of the hazardous waste that was there, or the chair that the poor guy died in. We've seen that. Yeah, it's it's a shame, but it's inevitable for all of us, and so. My view is, well, we'll get the chair out of there and we'll get going with the rest of the sale. And I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to you know, slam the family by any stretch. But at that point, to Sue and I and our stage or whatever, it's just stuff. Right, right. Well, you know, and it makes sense. You're approaching it from a business standpoint and, and trying to be sensitive to, as well. You know, I, I, and again, I don't want people who that are listening to this or viewing this to think that that you and I are are, are um, recommending that look at you, you know you got some poor person that is on their last legs and you kick them you know and they're on their meeting they're dying and you kick them out that's not what we're saying but when someone passes because if their wish is to die in their own home then which they is why which I, I I personally that's on my list right I don't want to be in an institution or well Cindy's talk to me about where to bury you in the backyard. <laughs> Yeah, it's either Cindy or the kids with a rock in the back of the head. I don't know. I I, I wonder which which every morning I wake up. But nonetheless, um, what, but uh, you know, uh, in all seriousness, no. If somebody wants to pass in their own home, obviously that's their 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 right, and and I uh, all the power to them. I think that's a that's a good a good choice if they can have it. Not everyone can have it, but when that's done and the home is sitting there, a lot of times I think there's a lot of um, caught up emotion with the heirs. And there, it's just there's a lot of sentimentality, as you said. This was Sally Stapler. This was, and 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 so again, they don't know what to do. They're all caught up, and it's sometimes they it's hard to work through that. So sometimes, being a voice of reason and approaching it the way you do, and say, "Listen, we appreciate that, but it's, things are not going to get better by leaving the house. It's going to continue to cost the estate and the heirs money. The house is going to continue to do to to especially with someone not living in it. You're talking about insurability, if there's a water leak, if there's, you know, we're coming upon winter here, right? So you got to heat the house. You got to make sure there's no frozen pipes, all of these other things. So if you can assist them to work through that process, I think that that's really helpful. Yeah, we, I remember once getting a call from another agent in the office saying, can, you're a notary, right? Can you come notarize a document? And sure, what are we notarizing? Uh, it's the guy's will. Okay, uh, so we make the appointment. I head over to the house, and there's the hospital bed in the middle of the living room. Everyone sitting around the hospital bed. I mean, this was just just pre having a wake, and I got there, and I, I try to be light, right? Hey, how we doing? I guess we all know why we're here. Okay, so I look at the guy and I said, "Are you familiar with what you're going to sign?" No. Well, for a notary, that's immediate stop, okay? 
So I said, let's take a moment to go through it. So I started to read through and who's getting what and all that. And he finally said, listen, I, I, I really don't care about any of that. I'm sure it's fine. I want to know who gets the boat. And the boat went to a buddy of his, and that's what was, all, <laughs> that was what was important. I'm sure that that didn't make his family feel great, but yeah, that was the important thing is where does the boat go? Um, but if that, you know, frankly, if the where the decision on the boat goes hadn't been, you know, hadn't been resolved, then you get in probate. What happens to the boat? We had one recently where the house sold, everything had been through probate, and there was a car there that hadn't hadn't gone anywhere and we had asked repeatedly what's the story with the car well the car was had a note on it it had a big dent creased hole in the side and the people that they got the car from didn't want it back and the the, the auto finance company didn't want it back and so the attorney said well just leave it well I did just leave it, and then that night the attorney calls me. He says, "You know, I've been thinking about it. That, that car needs to go." So it's like, okay, we get the car out of there. We we did get it to, to go. The next morning, literally, we're doing the final walkthrough, and there's the the car getting the hook. But it's like stuff like that shouldn't wait till the last second. No, you know what? And 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 I I think it's important that we're talking about this because it's a hey Brad, yeah, just hold that thought. Okay. Thank you for watching All Things Real Estate. We'll be right back.